Welcome to the Harris County Flood Control District's virtual community engagement meeting to discuss the Mud Gully Channel Conveyance Improvements Project. My name is Sparkle Bell with the Flood Control District Communications Team. And we are joined by Harris County Precinct 1, Commissioner Rodney Ellis. I'd like to start the meeting off tonight with remarks from him. Hello, this is Harris County Commissioner Rodney Ellis. Thank you for taking time from your busy schedule to join us this evening. These meetings are important. Getting your feedback and opinions on flood control projects is how we can ensure that projects work for you and your neighbors. Flooding is an ever-present threat to our community. It remains one of Harris County's highest priorities. As we approach the third anniversary of Hurricane Harvey later this month, we can't forget that many of our communities are still vulnerable to flooding. Since joining Commissioner's Court in 2017, I've made it a priority to fight for equity to be at the center of our decision-making process when it comes to prioritizing flood control projects across the county. In 2018, Harris County voters passed a $2.5 billion flood bond that gave underserved communities that first opportunity to receive real mitigation. The explicit ballot language required a process for the equitable distribution of flood bonds to reduce flood risk. After decades of neglect, low-income areas, communities of color, and flood-prone areas have been experiencing flooding of homes and streets with each hard rain because these communities have been passed over for years due to an inequitable federal formula. That formula would prioritize flood mitigation projects based on property values, not people. That serves only those who live in higher-income neighborhoods rather than those in the most need. With these guidelines, we are now able to prioritize areas that have a higher risk for loss of life due to disasters and take longer to recover from those disasters. Tonight's meeting will focus on improvements to Mud Gully, the first project to begin under the Clear Creek Federal Project. This long overdue project is the first step toward reducing the flood risk of flooding for thousands of homes and businesses in the Clear Creek watershed. Your feedback tonight will make an enormous difference as we work together to make this project the best that it can be. Thank you for being a part of tonight's call and thank you to the Harris County Flood Control District staff for hosting this virtual meeting. We're looking forward to hearing your comments. And we are also pleased that State Representative Dennis Paul has joined us tonight. Thank you so much for participating in this virtual community engagement meeting. The virtual meeting is being offered by the Flood Control District to continue to share vital information with the community during this period when in-person public meetings have been suspended due to safety concerns from the COVID-19 pandemic. I am joined tonight by a team of flood control district leadership and subject matter experts to ensure we continue to keep you up to date on these important flood mitigation projects in your community. We are glad to see you all engaged and wanting to hear and learn about this project, and we look forward to sharing updates. But before we begin, I'd like to have Sharon Turpick with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, who is our project partner, say a few words. Good evening, I am Sharon Turpak, Deputy Chief of the Project Management Branch of the Galveston District Corps of Engineers. On behalf of Colonel Timothy Vale, District Commander, thank you for allowing us to say a few words about our partnership with Harris County Flood Control District. We have been partners with the district in developing and implementing flood risk management projects together in Harris County since the 1940s. The post-Hurricane Harvey Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018 funded the Clear Creek Flood Risk Management Project for the full federal cost share. The Flood Control District is leading the construction of this project under Section 1043B of the Water Resources Reform and Development Act of 2014. Receipts of the post Harvey federal funds and move out by the flood control district on constructing this project represents a strategic opportunity to make great strides in reducing flood risk and increasing community resilience in the county. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. This virtual public meeting will begin tonight with a presentation where we share project updates 
including the construction schedule and other important information for Mud Gully Channel Conveyance Improvements Project. The presentation will be followed by a virtual question and answer session with Flood Control District team members. Attendees will be able to comment, submit comments and questions through the website or by phone. Any comments not addressed during the Q&A session will receive a response from the Flood Control District after the event. Instructions on how to participate in this virtual open house are included on the slides, on the meeting webpage, and on the Flood Control District website. I will also share a reminder of these instructions when we reach the Q&A portion of this meeting. We will now transition to Scott Elmer, Assistant Operations Director, who will share information about the district and about this project. Scott, over to you. Thank you, Park Sparkle, and thanks to everybody that's taken time out to join us. We wish we could be there in person, but we've got to make do under the conditions we're in. In this presentation, we'll give you a brief overview of the Mud Gully Channel Conveyance Improvement Project. But before we get to that, let's have a little bit of information on the Flood Control District. So, who are we? Who is the Harris County Flood Control District? We are a special purpose district created in 1937 by the Texas legislature. This was in response to floods that devastated the Houston area in 1929 and in 1935. We originally served as a local partner to leverage federal dollars for flood damage reduction. And Harris County Commissioner's Court serves as our governing body. While we are a separate entity from Harris County, the Harris County Commissioner's Court is our governing body. Our mission is to provide flood damage reduction projects that work with appropriate regard for community and natural values. One of our most difficult challenges is constructing effective projects that are sensitive to community and natural values in a highly urbanized area. Harris County has 22 main watersheds. These total approximately 1,800 square miles and more than 2,500 linear miles of channel. How long is that? Well, 2,500 miles is approximately the distance from New York to California. Each watershed has its own unique characteristics and needs. Today, we're in the Clear Creek watershed in Southeast Harris County, represented as the star on the map. So, why do we flood? Some of these answers are pretty obvious, but we're prone to extreme rainfall events, including tropical storms and hurricanes. We have a flat, slow draining landscape, and we're predominantly consisting of clay soils that do not soak up rainfall quickly. In our mission, the Flood Control District works with other agencies, and we share jurisdiction over flooding issues in Harris County. This slide is an illustration of that shared jurisdiction. Inside neighborhoods, as shown on the left side of this slide, storm sewers and roadside ditches collect stormwater runoff and start the process of moving it away from the streets and homes. Storm sewers and roadside ditches are the responsibility of the underlying municipality and Harris County Engineering in the unincorporated ports of the county. The larger bayous and channels and then take the collected stormwater and move it through our drainage system to Galveston Bay. These are the responsibility of the flood control district. These are shown on the right side of the slide. In the middle is a stormwater detention bay, sometimes constructed by the flood control district, sometimes by other parties. When storm sewers are increased, this incre it creates an increase in runoff. Since it's our policy to avoid impacts to properties downstream, Stormwater detention basins help to safely take in and temporarily store excess stormwater during heavy rain events. Often we partner with Harris County precincts, utility districts, and others to add recreational amenities such as trails to these basins and along our channels. On August 25th, 2018, on the one year anniversary of Hurricane Harvey, Harris County voters approved $2.5 billion in bonds for flood risk reduction projects. This vote followed a series of meetings across Harris County in each watershed 
which resulted in a list of 181 bond projects, including more than $131 million in projects for the Clear Creek watershed. All of our Clear Creek watershed projects have been initiated. A total of more than 680 million in partnership funding received so far stretches the 2018 bond program even further. The actual timing of any individual project will depend upon a variety of factors, including environmental permitting, right-of-way acquisition, and utility relocations. Project lists and project projected schedules will be updated periodically. As I mentioned previously, partnership funding is an important aspect of the 2018 bond program. This graphic illustrates the many sources of federal, state, and local funding that Flood Control District is working to secure for Harris County. Each agency has its own definition of eligible projects and its own requirements for local matching funding. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is our major partner on the Clear Creek Federal Project. We'll go into more details about how the Mud Gully Project fits into the federal project in just a few minutes. So we'll now move into the part of the program that is specifically about the Clear Creek Watershed and the Mud Gully Channel Conveyance Improvements Project. The Mud Gully Channel Project is part of a larger Clear Creek Federal Project, an effort between Harris County Flood Control District, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Brazoria County Drainage District No. 4, the City of Pearland, the City of Houston, and Galveston County. The Clear Creek Federal Project is implementing the drainage improvements throughout the Clear Creek watershed, which is the area shown on this slide in color. The Clear Creek watershed is a natural boundary defined by where stormwater ultimately drains. For the Clear Creek watershed, all of the storm sewers and roadside, roadside ditches ultimately drain to Clear Creek. In the case of Mud Gully, there are smaller channels within the watershed that help to convey water to Clear Creek similar to how local roads connect to major roads then lead to a highway. Once the stormwater flows to Clear, Clear Creek, it flows to Galveston Bay. The Clear Creek Federal Project, which will be implemented over the next five to seven years, includes channel improvements, stormwater detention basins, bridge replacements and modifications, and environmental mitigation and enhancements with the goal of increasing the capacity of the Clear Creek drainage system and reducing the risk of flooding for the 1% or the 100-year storm event. The project we are discussing today is for channel improvements along Mud Gully in the north central region of the Clear Creek watershed. The Mud Gully project is located in Harris County immediately upstream of the South Belt Stormwater Detention Basin, which is currently under Phase Three construction. The construction will be along Beamer Road near the Memorial Hermann Southeast Hospital and the San Jacinto College South Campus. The project limits along Beamer Road are from Sage Rock Drive to just downstream of the Beamer Road Bridge. The construction will consist of concrete lining approximately 4,500 feet of the channel and also replacing 25 storm sewer outfalls along the channel. The construction efforts are estimated at $10.7 million, which will be a cost share between the Clear Creek Federal Project and the Flood Control District Bond Program. The project is currently in the final design stage and the bidding stage will soon be commencing. This project is the first project going into construction for the overall Clear Creek Federal Project. The image shown shows a regulatory 1% or 100-year floodplain in yellow and the limits of the Mud Gully Channel Improvement outlined in pink. The Mud Gully improvements were identified in 2013 as part of the general re-evaluation report completed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The report found that in areas draining the Mud Gully, there have been flood damage claims resulting from frequent low-level storms, as well as structural damage for less frequent storms events with significant flooding. 
This exhibit shows the reduced 1% 100-year flood extents in blue. The proposed project will reduce the regulatory floodplain by more than 395 acres, drop water levels by more than one and a half feet, and remove more than 400 homes from the 1% or 100-year regulatory floodplain. As a result, the risk of flood damages during low and high frequency storms will decrease. Additionally, during significant rain events, mobility will be improved and emergency vehicles will have more access throughout the community in case their services are required. So, what can you expect to see when construction is completed? The proposed design will extend the existing channel lining near Sage Rock Drive downstream 4,500 feet to just past the Beamer Road Bridge. The design uses the area within the Beamer Road median. Since the width of the channel is limited by Beamer Road on both sides, the concrete lining allows for the maximum volume of water to be conveyed within the channel, decreasing the water surface elevation, which provides the benefit of helping to reduce flood damage risk. Also, you'll see that the aged metal drainage pipes in the channel will be replaced with reinforced concrete pipes. Typically, the channel bottom will be widened to 45 feet with a slope of three feet horizontal for every one foot vertical. The channel below the bridges will be widened, but structural changes to the bridges are not proposed as part of this project. For the 1% or 100 year floodplain, plus, sorry, flood event, the improved cross section will allow an additional 230 cubic feet per second of flow through the channel while decreasing the water surface elevation. Although the flow in the channel will increase, areas downstream will not be impacted because additional flow will be mitigated by the South Belt Stormwater Detention Basin referenced earlier in the presentation. Unfortunately, for improvements to happen along Mud Gully, we will have to do construction. So next we'll discuss traffic impacts and the time frame for construction. The project will be built in three phases. Phase one is from Sage Rock Drive to Scarsdale Boulevard. The second is from Scarsdale Boulevard to Astoria Boulevard. And the third is from Astoria Boulevard to just downstream of Beamer Road. Throughout the project, lane closures will be prohibited during the hours of 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., the peak driving time. For the majority of the construction, one lane will remain open for traffic along Beamer Road in both directions. When there is construction occurring under the bridges along the channel, the bridges will be closed and detour routes will be provided. So the first of these detour routes, phase one construction occurs below the Scarsdale Bridge. Traffic will be routed to either Sage Down Lane or Astoria Boulevard. During phase two, when construction occurs below the Astoria Bridge, traffic will be routed to either Scarsdale Boulevard or the U-turn available between the Beamer Road east and westbound lanes. During phase three, the Beamer Road Bridge will shut down eastbound traffic past Astoria Boulevard. Eastbound traffic will have to take Scarsdale Boulevard going south to Blackhawk Road, then west to Dixie Form Road and travel north where traffic meets back up at Beamer Road. As we mentioned earlier, the final design is wrapping up and will be entering the bidding phase soon. We expect construction to take approximately 615 days, starting in late 2020 or early 2021 and ending in the fall of 2022. The approximate time for each phase is shown on this slide with phase, down, phase one from Sage Down Lane to Scarsdale Boulevard taking the longest, approximately a year. Phase two will take approximately five months and phase three, approximately three months. Sparkle, back over to you. Thanks Scott for that helpful overview of this project. 
Before we move into the Q&A session tonight, I want to share a quick reminder that we would love to hear from you on this project and other projects rolling out across Harris County. If you have additional comments or questions throughout the life cycle of this project, or if you would like to sign up to receive email alerts on this or any other projects in the watershed, please visit hcfcd.org forward slash mud dash gully. Community engagement is an important component of the work we do, and we invite your continued participation as projects move forward. Now, as a reminder, there are three ways to submit a comment about this project during tonight's session. Submit a comment on this site in the box near the presentation live stream. That's the first way. The second way is you can submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at publicinput.com forward slash mud gully. Or lastly, you can submit a comment via phone at 855-925-2801 using the meeting code 9734. If you are joining us via phone tonight, please press star three to leave a message. Additionally, I want to reiterate that any questions not addressed during tonight's Q&A will receive a response from the Flood Control District after the event. Information from this meeting and a recording of the live stream will be available on the Flood Control District's website and our YouTube channel. Joining Scott tonight for our question and answer session are Ian Hudson and Tommy Joe Scott who are both overseeing efforts for this project. And we're gonna kick it off with our first question from Philip Radiso, and I'm gonna pass this one over to you, Ian. He has a question as to if there are any downstream improvements from this or future projects in the area. Thanks, Sparkle. So the conveyance improvement project that we're discussing with you tonight in combination with the South Belt Stormwater Detention Basin will collectively yield a downstream benefit on the main stem of Clear Creek. However, with the federal project overall, we're doing hydraulic modeling for the entire project to ensure no adverse impact downstream. Um, and in addition to that effort, the Flood Control District has a separate line item in its bond program for improvements downstream of the federal project. So there are several efforts going on related to further improvement in the watershed, but at, at minimum, we will be ensuring that the federal project does not have a downstream adverse impact. And in fact, the as I said, the Mud Gully project and the stormwater detention basin will have a benefit downstream as well as the benefit that was shown upstream on the slides in Scott's presentation. Thank you so much for that. Um, Ian, would you also take this next question? Can you tell us about the funding sources for this particular project? Yes, as Scott explained in the presentation, the Mud Gully project is cost shared between the Flood Control District and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It's approximately a 50-50 split. So when Congress passed supplemental funds following Hurricane Harvey that funded many Corps of Engineers projects, um, we did not yet have an agreement with the Corps. And so some of our projects are fully funded to completion, but the Clear Creek project is, is cost shared. So it was just the federal portion that was, that was funded on the federal side. Um, so uh, it's a 50-50 cost share between the Flood Control District and the Corps. Thank you so much for providing that clarity. It's always good to know where the money's coming from. Um, Scott, this next question is for you. And, and thank you all for providing so many great questions. We are answering these questions live and we're going to do our best to get to as many as possible. Scott, this next question is for you. Can you tell us a little bit about how we're collaborating with other local entities like the US Army Corps of Engineers or others? Sure, this project has an extensive amount of collaboration. Of course, our major partner is the US Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, they're working with us not just by providing funding, but also technical expertise as well on that. Uh, we're working extensively with the City of Houston, Houston Parks Board, the City of Pearland, Brazoria County Drainage District Number 4, uh, Galveston County, Brazoria County. They're all partners on this project in 
many different ways, uh, whether it's through uh, the use of properties or land in the area that they have available, uh, through maintenance uh, programs down the road, uh, through uh, dedication of rights away. So it is a very big partnership project. We also have an interagency coordination team set up, uh, which brings in people like TCEQ, Texas Parks and Wildlife, to help us on the environmental mitigation portion of the project. That's a pretty exhaustive list of partners. Thank you so much for sharing that. Our next question is going to go to Tommy Joe, and it's from Danielle Goshen. Have you considered any green or natural infrastructure components for this project? And if so, what are they? Yes, yeah, so part of this project was um, was included in the environmental evaluations, um, the, the environmental impact statement that was completed in 2012. And through that, they evaluated the impacts and benefits of the flood risk management features and any sort of mitigation features. Um, as part of this particular project, because we're constrained between Beamer Road, um, if y'all could actually go to slide 18 for me for the project design, you can see that the channel, it has a very limited space of where they can put the channel or expand the channel. And so using concrete lining in this particular case allows us to maximize the space as much as we can. All right, thank you so much for that. As a reminder, all of the information from this meeting, so the slides that we are that we've shown tonight and a recording of this live stream will be available on the Flood Control District's website and YouTube channel following this event. And I want to remind you that there are again three ways that you can comment. You can submit a comment on the site in the box near the presentation live stream on the public input site, so publicinput.com forward slash mud gully, or if you're joining us via phone tonight, please press star three to leave a message. Now with that, we're gonna take our next question. And our next question is for Scott. How does this fit into the 2018 bond program? This project is consistent with the 2018 bond program and the mission of the Harris County flood control district, providing effective flood control projects with appropriate regard for community and natural values on that. Um, the project is consistent with both the mission statement and the bond program because the bond program was based upon our mission statement and the guidance we received from our governing body commissioner's court. And this project is consistent with all of that. Thank you so much, Scott. Ian, our next question coming in is for you. Is there a connection between the South Belt stormwater detention basin and this mud gully project? Thanks, Sparkle. There's not a physical connection. The mud gully channel project will end just downstream of Beamer Road, as shown on the exhibit there. And the structure that connects to the South Belt Basin is just downstream of that. So the projects are connected in terms of their hydraulic dependence on one another, but there is not a, an actual physical connection between the two. Thank you for that clarity. Tommy Joe. our next question will be for you. How are environmental considerations being taken into account? Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I, like I said earlier, uh, as part of this project, we did a general reevaluation report that was conducted or completed in 2012 and included that in that was the environmental impact study. And that looked at the uh, in, impacts and benefits of the flood risk management uh, features and mitigation uh, measures that we'll be utilizing on the project. And uh, through that, that we, we implemented that as part of the whole project, including Mud Gully. Now for Mud Gully itself, we do have different trees that we are trying to save. We have about 50 of them for Mud Gully. All right, thank you so much for that. I want to um, just let you all know that we are sticking to the specific project details of the Mud Gully conveyance channel improvement um, project tonight. Um, any other questions that you have shared with us that are not related to this specific project, 
we will follow up with you um, after the meeting to ensure you receive a response. Now with that, Scott, I'd like to go back over traffic implications of this project. Let's do a little bit of that. Sure, and if, there we go, great. Um, as I stated before, uh, three phases to the project. We recognize that Beamer Road is a heavily traveled roadway. It's also uh, has a lot of importance to the community on that. That is why during construction, we're not going to allow lane closures during the peak driving times, the morning and the evening rush, as shown on this slide. Uh, in general, the only time the bridges will be closed is when there's actual work going on under the bridge. And in that case, we will have detour routes appropriately signed in accordance with the Texas Manual, Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices uh, to guide people to the alternate routes on that. I wish it would not have an impact. Uh, unfortunately, construction always does. Uh, we are trying to minimize that impact to the maximum extent possible. And there should always be at least one lane open in all direct in both directions uh, during the course of the construction. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's always helpful to learn and, and know more about the traffic impact. Scott, our next question coming in is, are there any plans to construct any recreational amenities for this project? Uh, recreational amenities uh, are not something that is constructed by the Harris County Flood Control District. It is not in our charter uh, to do so. We are a flood damage reduction agency, not a recreational component uh, on that. And as the uh, the slide with the cross section, I think it was slide 20, Rob. Oh, sorry, long slide. Um, there you go, thank you, 18. Um, you can see that there's, in the area that we're impacting between the two lanes of Beamer Road, uh, upon completion of the project, there will be very limited space available between the edge of the channel pavement and the edge of the travel roadway. As such, there's not much room for recreational amenities. However, uh, we're always working and willing to engage with partners that wish to construct recreational amenities, whether they're uh, City of Houston, Harris County, a precinct, a uh, MUD district. Uh, we're always willing to incorporate them wherever feasible and possible, and we'll be willing to consider any proposals put forth. Thank you so much, Scott. Ian, our next question will be for you. What's the estimated completion timeline for this project and what projects will we see next in the watershed? Thanks, Sparkle. So this slide that you're looking at now sums it up pretty well. The estimated duration for the Mud Gully project is 615 calendar days starting later this year, subject to Corps of Engineers approval of the final design. As far as projects that you'll see next in the watershed, um, there are actually others that are ongoing right now. As Scott mentioned in his presentation, the third phase of the South Belt Stormwater Detention Basin is currently under construction, as well as the Dag Road Detention Basin, which is six or seven miles west of the Mud Gully project. Um, of course, there's also the rest of the federal project that will ultimately follow the, this mud gully segment. And that'll be implemented over the course of five to seven years. So that's a that's a longer range project, but it is a big one that's on the horizon for the watershed. Thank you, Ian. Our next question is from a David Johnson, and I'm going to send this one to you, Tommy. Want Tommy Joe, once construction starts, will it be continuous? And are there any scheduled periods where one phase of construction is waiting on the work of a contractor working on a different section? So the work is going to be completed by one contractor. We don't have multiple contractors uh, or contracts for different contractors for this project. Just one contract, one contractor. Um, if we could go to slide 20 uh, that shows the different phases. The contractor will be working in phases and they will be working solely in each phase, not working on multiple phases at one time. Thank you so much for that. 
Our next question is from Daniel Goshen, and that question um, is how can individuals, uh, how do we take public input for our, for projects or on projects? And so we will be taking and continuing to receive comments and input on this project through September 5th. And you can submit a comment at publicinput.com forward slash mud gully. You can also uh, get provide a comment on the flood control district's website and the URL is posted on the screen. Um, you can also call the phone number listed on the screen, 855-925-2801 and use meeting code 9734. So there are a number of ways and we encourage continuous feedback um, on all of our projects. And we encourage you to visit the flood control district's website to stay up to date on the latest information. Again, the project uh, period that will receive comments, the comment period, is through September 5th. So please do provide um, comments or input uh, before the end of the comment period. Thank you. And our next question is for Scott. Can residents expect to see work happening every day of the week? There's nothing in the contract documents that will mandate work seven days a week. And contractors, uh, much like everybody else, uh, do en enjoy an occasional day off. Uh, but in general, you can expect contractors to be out there uh, the majority of the week, definitely the work week, the five days, and a lot of times we do end up with Saturday work. Uh, but Saturday work, Sunday work, and work on holidays uh, are subject to specific approval to make sure we can have appropriate inspection, uh, sorry, district approval. So make sure we have appropriate inspection uh, on the project. Uh, it also, this kind of brings up the uh, issue of working time. The contractor is required to follow the appropriate noise ordinance for city of Houston or unincorporated Harris County uh, during that time. So uh, we will be holding the contractor to the appropriate noise ordinances as well. Thank you. Scott, can you tell us why it is important to pair a stormwater detention basin with these channel conveyance improvement projects? And how does that work with South Belt here? The Harris County Flood Control District has a strong commitment uh, to avoiding downstream impacts. Uh, if we would, in, in this particular case, if we improve the conveyance, improve the flow of water, the quantity of water going through the channel without providing offsetting, mitigating detention, uh, then we would not be holding ourselves to that standard of no downstream impacts. Uh, that's why it's so important that we compare the South Belt Basin's and this project and make sure the basin's on the ground and working uh, prior to this contract, this uh, improvement being fully realized out there. Uh, so basically it's to honor the commitment to the citizens of no downstream impact on our projects. Thank you. Ian, at this point, can you revisit the estimated cost for the Mud Gully project? Sure, thank you for unmuting me. The estimated cost is approximately 10.7 million, and that is what we call the engineer's estimate. So the project has not yet been advertised. Uh, when it is, and contractors bid on the project, different numbers may came back, come back, but we think the 10.7 is reasonably close to what the project should cost. And to, to revisit my earlier point on the funding and, and make it a little more clear, this project is cost shared between the Corps of Engineers and the Flood Control District. On flood control side, it's with 2018 bond program funds. On the Corps side, it's federal funds that were provided through the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018. And those two funding sources taken together fully fund the project. Thank you, Ian. Our next question is from Peggy Zoller. Why was this project, including South Belt detention, selected to be among the first along the watershed and i'll pass this question but we'll go back to you ian yeah the simple answer to that is it was the furthest along in the design at the time that we signed our project partnership agreement with the corps of engineers and we want to move forward with what we can as soon as we can so that's that's why you're seeing this first 
Thank you. Tommy Joe, the next question will be for you and it's from Dennis Roach. Are there any plans for the Scarsdale Bridge to close only one side at a time and make the other bi-directional? Yeah, so if we could go to slide 21. And in here, you can see under the phase one traffic control plan, you can see that the bridge is going to be closed. And to answer your question, no, it is not gonna be a, um, a single lane closure where the other lane will remain open. And in this case, the both lanes will be closed so that work can be conducted underneath the bridge. And this is the detour plan that will be used when those bridges close. Thank you so much, Tommy Joe. Scott, it looks like we've had a number of people join a few minutes late into the presentation. So we'd like for you to go over some more of the project specific information once more, just to ensure that everyone has all of the pertinent information. Sure. One quick second. All right, so uh, as stated previously, we're here for the uh, Clear Creek uh, Federal Flood Improvement Project, and specifically the Mud Gully Channel Conveyance Improvement Project on that. Uh, the Mud Gully Project is a component of the larger federal project on there, and this is a partnership between Harris County Flood Control District, the Corps of Engineers, Brazoria County Drainage District 4, the City of Pearland, the City of Houston, Galveston County. Uh, the Clear Creek Federal Project is implementing drainage improvement throughout the Clear Creek watershed. Uh, the Clear Creek watershed is a natural boundary defined by where stormwater ultimately drains. For the Clear Creek watershed, all of the storm sewers and roadside ditches ultimately drain to Clear Creek. In the case of Mud Gully, there are smaller channels within the watershed that help to convey water to Clear Creek, similar to how local roads connect to major roads that then lead to a highway. Once stormwater reaches Clear Creek, it then flows off to Galveston Bay. The Clear Creek Federal Project is scheduled to be implemented over the next five to seven years. It includes channel improvements, stormwater detention basins, bridge replacements and modifications, environmental mitigation and enhancements with the goal of increasing the capacity of Clear Creek drainage system and reducing the risk of flooding for the 1% or the 100 year storm event. The project we're discussing today specifically is Mud Gully, and this is in the north central region of the Clear Creek watershed. The Mud Gully project is located in Harris County, immediately upstream of the South Belt Stormwater Detention Basin, currently under phase three construction. This construction will be along Beamer Road near the Memorial Hermann Southeast Hospital and the San Jacinto College South campus. The project limits along Beamer Road are from Sage Rock Drive to just downstream of the Beamer Road Bridge. The construction consists of concrete lining approximately 4,500 feet of the channel and also replacing 25 storm sewer outfalls along the channel. The construction efforts estimated at $10.7 million and is a cost share between the Clear Creek Federal Project with the Corps of Engineers and the Flood Control District Bond Program. The project is currently in its final design stage and the bidding phase is starting soon. This project is the first project of the larger overall Clear Creek Federal Project. This image shows the regulatory 1% or 100 year floodplain in yellow and the limits of the Mud Gully Channel Improvements Project in pink. The Mud Gully improvements were identified in 2013 as part of the general reevaluation report completed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The report found that in areas draining to Mud Gully, there have been flood damage claims resulting from frequent low-level storm events, as well as structural damage for less frequent storm events with significant flooding. This exhibit shows the reduced 1% 100-year flood extents in blue, basically the post-project uh, extent. The proposed project will reduce the regulatory floodplain by more than 395 acres, drop water levels by more than one and a half feet, and remove more than 400 homes from the 1% or 100 year floodplain. As a result, the risk of flood damages during low and high frequency storms will decrease. 
Additionally, during significant rain events, mobility will be improved and emergency vehicles will have more access throughout the community in their case their, their services are needed. So what's gonna look like when we're done? The proposed design will extend the existing channel lining near Sage Rock Drive down 4,500 feet to just past the Beamer Road Bridge. This design uses the area within the Beamer Road median, and since the width of the channel is limited by Beamer Road on both sides, the concrete lining allows for the maximum volume of water to be conveyed within the channel, decreasing the water surface elevation, which provides the benefit of helping to reduce the flood damage risk. Also, you'll see the aged metal drainage pipes in the channel replaced with reinforced concrete pipes. Typically, the channel bottom will be widened to 45 feet with a side slope of three feet horizontal for every one foot vertical. The channel below the bridges will be widened, but structural changes to the bridges are not part of this project. For the 1% or 100 year storm event, the improved cross section will allow an additional 230 cubic feet per second of flow through the channel while decreasing the water surface elevation. Although the flow in the channel will increase, areas downstream will not be impacted because the additional flow will be mitigated by the South Belt stormwater detention basins that we referenced earlier in the presentation. So we're gonna have to do construction to build all this. So next we'll start talking about traffic impacts and the time frame. Uh, as mentioned during the questions in the earlier presentation, we're looking at three phases of construction. Phase one, from Sage Rock to Scarsdale. The second is from Scarsdale Boulevard to Astoria Boulevard. And the third, from Astoria Boulevard to just downstream of Bema Road. Throughout the project, lane closures will be prohibited during the hours of 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. For the majority of the construction, one lane will remain open for traffic along Bema Road in both directions. When there is construction occurring under the bridges along the channel, the bridges will be closed and detour routes provided. During phase one, when we're below the Scarsdale Bridge, traffic will be routed to either Sage Down Lane or Astoria Boulevard. During phase two, when construction is happening below the Astoria Bridge, traffic will be routed to either Scarsdale Boulevard or the U-turn available between the Beamer Road east and westbound lanes. During phase three, the, <coughs> pardon me. During phase three, the Beamer Road Bridge will shut down eastbound traffic past the Astoria Boulevard. Eastbound traffic will have to take Scarsdale Boulevard going south to meet Blackhawk Road, then west to Dixie Farm Road, and travel north, where the traffic will then meet back up at Beamer Road. As we mentioned earlier, final design is wrapping up, and we're entering the bidding phase. We expect the construction to be about 615 days, starting in late 2020, early 2021, and ending in the fall of 2022. The approximate time for each phase is shown on this slide, with phase one being the longest, and that's estimated to take approximately one year. Phase two will take approximately five months, and phase three, approximately three months. Thank you so much for that, Scott. I'm sure those who join late are very much appreciative of you providing that information. As a reminder, there are three ways to submit a comment about this project during tonight's session. You can submit a comment on the site in the box near the presentation live stream. You can also submit a comment at publicinput.com forward slash mud gully. Or if you're joining us via phone tonight, please press star three to leave a message. Additionally, I want to reiterate that any questions not addressed during tonight's question and answer session will receive a response from the Flood Control District after the event. And information from this meeting, along with the recording of the live stream, will be available on the Flood Control District's website and YouTube channel. Now, Ian, the next question will be for you. How will people receive construction updates about this project as it moves forward? Thanks, Sparkle. There are a few different ways that updates can go out or be requested. One is the bond project webpage, which is there on the slide, hcfcd.org 
forward slash mud dash gully. We'll have periodic updates there. Um, additionally, if there are community groups, HOAs, what have you, interested in updates, we're, we're happy to provide those upon request. Feel free to reach out to us. Or if you just have a quick question or clarification that you need, uh, you can email the Flood Control District communications team at communications at hcfcd.hctx.net and they will be able to route your question to the right person and get a response to you. Thank you so much for providing that information. I know that uh, community engagement is an integral part of the work that we do. So we encourage you to submit comments, questions, or feedback um, on any of our projects so that we can uh, work with you to ensure a successful result. All right, next up, I have a question for Tommy Joe. Why are we moving forward with concrete lining for this project? Yes, so if we could go to slide 18, um, here you can see that we are constrained on either side of the channel um, by Beamer Road eastbound and westbound lanes. And by using the concrete lining, we're allowed to maximize the limited space between these roadways in order to provide uh, increased conveyance. Thank you so much for that. At the start of this meeting, we played um, a call from Harris County Commissioner Rodney Ellis of Precinct 1. And for those of you that might have missed that call, um, we will play that once more. Hello, this is Harris County Commissioner Rodney Ellis. Thank you for taking time from your busy schedule to join us this evening. These meetings are important. Getting your feedback and opinions on flood control projects is how we can ensure that projects work for you and your neighbors. Flooding is an ever-present threat to our community and remains one of Harris County's highest priorities. As we approach the third anniversary of Hurricane Harvey later this month, we can't forget that many of our communities are still vulnerable to flooding. Since joining Commissioner's Court in 2017, I've made it a priority to fight for equity to be at the center of our decision-making process when it comes to prioritizing flood control projects across the county. In 2018, Harris County voters passed a $2.5 billion flood bond that gave underserved communities their first opportunity to receive real mitigation. The explicit ballot language required a process for the equitable distribution of flood bonds to reduce flood risk. After decades of neglect, low-income areas, communities of color, and flood-prone areas have been experiencing flooding of homes and streets with each hard rain because these communities have been passed over for years due to an inequitable federal formula. That formula would prioritize flood mitigation projects based on property values, not people. That serves only those who live in higher income neighborhoods rather than those in the most need. With these guidelines, we are now able to prioritize areas that have a higher risk for loss of life due to disasters and take longer to recover from those disasters. Tonight's meeting will focus on improvements to Mud Gully, the first project to begin under the Clear Creek Federal Project. This long overdue project is the first step toward reducing the flood risk of flooding for thousands of homes and businesses in the Clear Creek watershed. Your feedback tonight will make an enormous difference as we work together to make this project the best that it can be. Thank you for being a part of tonight's call and Thank you to the Harris County Flood Control District staff for hosting this virtual meeting. We're looking forward to hearing your comment. Thank you so much for that. All right, next, let's go back into the question and answer period. And Scott, can you talk a little bit about the history of this project and the overall federal project? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, for those that grew up in the community, uh, they've probably heard about the Clear Creek project for many decades. Uh, the project in one form or another has been around since 1968. Um, the projects started uh, looking at the entire reach of Clear Creek from 288 uh, down to Galveston Bay on that. It's a cooperative effort between the Harris County Flood Control District and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Brazoria County Drainage District Number Four, the City of Houston, the City of Pearland, 
in Galveston County and Brazoria County. Uh, the project consists of the overall federal project uh, as currently scoped uh, based upon the general reevaluation report that was adopted in 2013 consists of 15.1 miles of channel conveyance improvements along Clear Creek from Highway 288 to Dixie Farm Road, 2.4 miles of channel conveyance improvements along Turkey Creek from Dixie Farm Road to Clear Creek, 2.1 miles of channel conveyance improvements along Mary's Creek from Harkey Road to State Highway 35, 0.8 miles of channel conveyance improvements along Mud Gully, the project we're here for tonight, from Sage Rock Drive to Beamer Road, about 500 acre feet of inline stormwater detention along Clear Creek, additional offline stormwater detention facilities, 17 bridge replacements or modifications, it, extensive environmental mitigation, environmental mitigation and enhancements, and a second outlet channel and gates from Clear Creek to Galveston Bay, which was completed uh, several years ago on that. Uh, the project is, the goal is to reduce the extent of structure flooding during the 1% or 100 year regulatory floodplain. It's been a very dynamic project. It's full of partnership. And I would like to touch a little bit on some of the environmental mitigation and enhancements. Uh, we do have, as part of this project, a commitment to do environmental restoration by the removal of non-native species along the main stem of Clear Creek and the planting back of native species, uh, about 400 stems or 400 plantings per acre of native tree species, along with a 35 year requirement for maintenance and making sure these trees grow on that. Uh, so we also have some oxbows that have been disconnected from Clear Creek over the years and these will be reconnected to provide better habitat and higher quality wetlands along the project. So that's a brief summary of the overall federal project. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank our partners with the Corps of Engineers and the fact that this project was funded under the 2018 Bipartisan Budget Act and a 50-50 partnership, roughly thereabouts between us and the Corps. Thank you so much for that brief summary. Now, Ian, as a piggyback to that, can you tell us how this fits into the overall federal project? Thanks, Sparkle. I think Scott explained all of the components of the federal project pretty well. So it's it's collectively about 20 miles of, of channel improvements and then inline detention, environmental mitigation and enhancements. Um, what I would say as far as how Mud Gully fits into that picture is, um, you know, our other federal projects are generally just on the main stems of these large watersheds, but due to the hydrology of the Clear Creek watershed, you really have to have improvements on the tributaries too to get meaningful flood damage reduction um, further away from the main stem. You can't just improve the main stem and, and solve the issues further out. And so Mud Gully is one of those tributary improvements. And as Scott mentioned, the other two tributaries that are part of the federal project are Turkey Creek and, and Mary's Creek. So similar improvements are, are planned for other tributaries. Um, not concrete lining like on Mud Gully, but conveyance improvements. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have time for one more question. Tommy Joe, can I have a question that has come in that says more water in the channel sounds like more water downstream. How are those impacts mitigated? Yes, yeah, so if we could go to slide 13. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, so here you can see in pink, which are going to be the limits of the Mud Gully project. And yes, the, the channel will be increasing the conveyance through that zone. And then at the downstream end of the project, um, you can see in blue the outline of the South Belt, uh, South Belt Stormwater Detention Basin area, which is already under construction. Um, this detention ba basin facility is being used to mitigate the improvements from Mud Gully Channel uh, Project. Thank you, Tommy Joe. And with that, I'd like to reiterate that any questions not addressed during tonight's Q&A will receive a response from the Flood Control District after the event. 
Information from this meeting and a recording of the live stream will be available on the Flood Control District's website and YouTube channel. I'd also like to share one final reminder that we are continuing to accept comments and feedback on this project through the comment period, which runs through September 5th, 2020, but we welcome engagement throughout the duration of the project's life cycle. Thank you again for joining us this evening and for your engagement with this project. We look forward to continuing to share updates as our work moves forward. Stay safe and have a lovely evening.